For millennia, humanity has been breeding new kinds of plants and animals by steering the evolutionary processes of variation and selection to suit our needs and wishes. Now, scientists such as Eric Bonabo and his fellow researchers are developing software that uses these same principles to evolve solutions to a wide range of problems. Our brains cannot comprehend. Navy warship testing, shopping for gifts, selecting a baby name, medicinal chemistry. A scientist who's seeking to identify molecules that could be useful as drugs can work with software that generates candidate molecules based on initial constraints, then lets the scientist score those candidates and then produces a new generation of molecules based on the scoring. The process is then repeated generation after generation to converge on potentially useful drugs. By reinforcing certain plants or certain species, certain breeds, humans provide the selective pressure, humans provide the feedback, humans play God, in a way. And they say, this is going to survive to the next generation, this is not. Human beings were able to come up with corn, Corn is not a natural plant, it's a species that has been evolved by humans. It's evolutionary design. We can do the same in silico. So instead of using biological variations, we will use computational variations. An engineer can be offered a few solutions for the engineering problem that is facing now, and he will make the ultimate decisions because the computer is just a computer. You know, all the computer can do is what nature can do, namely generate variations, you know, random variations, create random solutions which are, you know, recombinations or mutations of previous solutions. Um, and then the engineer will look at these solutions and say, wow, this makes sense to me. I have this 20 years of experience in this particular field, so I can use this to select those solutions that makes the most sense. That's, that's evolutionary engineering, that's evolutionary design. Um, it's something that we've been doing for hundreds of years and now we're doing it in silico and it works really well. One category of problems is what I would call testing problems where tests designed by humans um, fall short of the objective of re-challenging really the system. My own experience is that people are very bad at designing tests for systems that humans have designed because our brains produce things um, that our brains cannot comprehend. Okay. Um, it's not because we, we, we build something or design something or engineer something that um, we can really understand the consequences of our actions or of our artifacts. I think that tests need to be evolved, not designed, because evolution is very good at finding parasites, you know, very good at finding things that will find the loopholes. That's what parasites do, right? Evolution is all about that. It's about designing organisms that will find the loopholes in the given environment. One example of a uh, project that we've worked on for the U.S. Navy is the uh, testing of uh, ship control systems for, for example, the chilled water system or the fire main. Um, these are very, very complex systems with lots of nodes and control valves. It's very hard for a designer of a control system like that to really know ahead of time everything that could happen to a warship. And therefore, challenging the system to test it you know, is very difficult for a designer to do. So the idea of evolving challenges so that we explore the space of possibilities um, is, is, uh, is very valuable. And actually, we found failure modes for a system like that that no human designer had ever thought of. For the designer of the system, it can be a little bit um, unsettling and disturbing to see failure modes that he had never um, thought of before. You know, so it's a mixed feeling. Um, the control system is saved but the person who was involved in designing the system in the first place uh, may, be, may be slightly uncomfortable with uh, you know, the surprising results that may come out of this approach. So it's actually a pipe rupture. People are reluctant to accept uh, solutions they don't understand. And the second category of problems um, has to do with situations when you don't quite know how to formulate what you're looking for. Only when you see it will you know that that's what you wanted. So you need to be exposed to the solution to know that that's what you wanted. If you're not exposed to the solution, you may not even know that the concept is relevant to you. Uh, a medicinal chemist at a pharmaceutical company um, looking for a compound that could become a drug, it's a very difficult problem to formalize and formulate mathematically. So there is a lot of uh, heart in tinkering that process. 
I think this grand synthesis of evolution and design will uh, become more and more uh, pervasive in engineering, in marketing, in consumer product design. And I think that what we'll see in 10 years, for example, is uh, uh, people designing their own stuff. Okay? They will have the power to do that because they will be able to evolve you know, what are the, whatever they want without knowing anything about the technology um, underlying the you know the design uh, process they don't need to know anything about I don't know uh, designing a car uh, all they have to know is what kind of car they want um, and what the evolutionary computation does for you is that it broadens your space of possibilities which we're not very good at exploring and at the same time it leverages what you know mm -hmm.